You are watching the Control Design Educational Video Series, Automation Basics Industrial Networking. This video is brought to you by our sponsors, Beckoff and Hilshire. More information on our sponsors will be provided later on. You can also find company and product information provided in the information section below. For decades, industrial networking meant point-to-point -point hardwiring that carried analog current or voltage signals from a control room or other central location to each cabinet, I.O. point, drive, motor, instrument, and sensor. These components sent signals back over similarly dedicated pathways. However, as process applications grew larger and more complex, this led to overflowing cable trays and cabinets that looked like they were full of colorful spaghetti. Despite their difficulties, many networks like this, or portions of them, continue to operate today. Because of point-to-point -point networking costs and complexity, not to mention the sheer volume of wire it consumes, developers sought to have cables that could gather signals from more than one device at a time. This can be done by sending low-power impulses superimposed on a 4 to 20 milliamp continuous analog signal or by using digital methods that slice data into tiny pieces delivered in a series. Either way, these analog and digital communications eventually progressed enough that multiple signals could travel over one, two, or several wires, much like the conversations that move between telephones. As a result, one twisted pair cable can go from a distributed control system, programmable logic controller, or other master device meander among participating components and then allow them all to communicate on the same looped circuit. This lets them send their data back to the controller and receive orders from it. While these innovations were often preceded by advances in telecommunications and computer networking, on the plant floor this loop came to be known as a field bus because of the field devices that it connected. While the basic field bus concept might seem cozy and collaborative, in practice there are many different communication protocols and standards. They typically aren't able to talk to each other or allow devices to interoperate. Although there has been some progress on translation and interoperability in recent years, they remain differentiated by communication speeds, data packet sizes, information organization, and physical media, usually because they grew up serving different technologies, industries, and regions, mostly in Europe, North America, and Asia. The other big snag is that suppliers of industrial networking devices and controls don't want their products to interoperate because they fear losing market share. This is why the IEC 61158 field bus standard ended up with eight heads or field bus protocols that it agreed to cover. Even the emergence and increasing dominance of Ethernet has failed to resolve this problem because there remain several major Ethernet flavors or protocol languages. As a result, many users still have a devil of a time getting their devices to communicate with each other. It's like everyone is on the same telephone line, but they're all speaking different languages. Increasing levels of microprocessing power and software have been thrown at this problem, and it's true that Cooperative efforts by networking trade organizations have helped, but many hurdles remain. Despite their differences, most of the field buses, their protocols, and other networking methods fit into the seven-layer open systems interconnection OSI model developed by the International Organization for Standardization. And its three media layers include, one, the physical layer for transmission and reception of raw bit streams over a physical medium. Two, the data link layer for reliable transmission of data frames between two nodes connected by a physical layer. Three, network for structuring and managing a multi-node network including addressing, routing, and traffic control. Its four host layers include four, transport for reliable transmission of data segments between points on a network, including segmentation, acknowledgement, and multiplexing. And the fifth layer, which is session for managing communication sessions, such as continuous exchange of information in the form of multiple back and forth transmissions between two nodes. 
and layer six, which is presentation for translation of data between a networking service and an application, including character encoding, data compression, and encryption decryption. And the seventh layer, which is called application for high-level application programming interfaces, including resource sharing, remote file access, directory service, and virtual terminals. There used to be more field buses and proprietary protocols, but many have shaken out over the years. And though openness and ethernet have expanded application types for each, they're still adopted largely according to historical precedent, namely according to the process or discrete settings for which they were originally designed and supported. The major remaining field bus types and their ethernet versions include device net, control net, and ethernet IP, which are based on the upper level common industrial protocol and supported by ODVA. EtherCAT field bus invented by Beckhoff Automation, standardized in the IEC 61158 standard and supported by the EtherCAT Technology Group. Foundation field bus H1, Foundation field bus high speed ethernet and heart communication protocol are supported by the Fieldcom Group. Modbus and Modbus TCP are supported by the Modbus organization. Profibus and Profinet are supported by PI International. And OPC and OPCUA information sharing strategies, which are supported by the OPC Foundation. As reported earlier, Ethernet, defined by the IEEE 802 standard, has made big gains on plant floors and in process applications, mainly due to its multi gigabits per second communication speeds, the simplicity and low cost of its CAT5, 5E, and 6 cabling, and communication organizing strategies, such as intelligent switching and ad addressing that enable Ethernet to avoid data collisions and behave more deterministically on the plant floor. These attributes have overcome the fact that Ethernet's flavors may not talk to each other, and because it's usually limited to 100 meter segments before a repeater or switch to fiber optic cabling is needed. When they can, many users skip the industrial protocols and use plain vanilla Ethernet or its more technical name of Transfer Control Protocol slash Internet Protocol, TCPIP, which can communicate more widely. Of course, the downside to all these added connections and links to wider networks and systems is more vulnerabilities and vectors for probes, intrusions, and attacks. This requires users to assess, monitor, and implement cybersecurity by enabling passwords and other basic protections, segmenting their networks with managed Ethernet switches used as firewalls between subnetworks, and monitoring their network traffic for anomalous behaviors. Ethernet's reach has been extended further with wireless Ethernet technologies based on Wi-Fi and its IEEE 802.11 standards or other wireless techniques from short distance Bluetooth to longer distance radio, cellular, and satellite solutions. These technologies have benefited from the ongoing development of more cost-effective, capable, and rugged antennas, transmitters, and receivers, wireless mesh, and self-healing topologies, and more thorough site audits and installations by users. The other game-changing aspect of Ethernet is it allows users to implement IP-style networking methods and organizational strategies. This, in turn, is bringing many process control applications, their components, and their data onto internal intranets, the wider industrial Internet of Things, and onward up to cloud computing services for big data analysis and, hopefully, more informed decision-making by users. Once Ethernet touches the Internet, all of today's IIoT and Industry 4.0 activities begin to happen, but they're all rooted in the industrial networks that came earlier. Beckoff, for everything from I.O. to drives to safety, EtherCAT is industrial Ethernet done right. Product features include communication to 256 digital I.O.s in 12 microseconds, line tree or start topology for up to 65,535 devices, and works with or without switches. Learn more at www.beckoff.com slash ethercat. Hillshire, scalable, flexible, connect anywhere. 
communication solutions for every application, bridge real-time networks, embed networking in devices and PCs, connect sensors and PLCs to IT and cloud. Learn more at www.hillshire.com.